for me, that was what triggered it because I was terrible at doing internal reporting. So my head office was asking for monthly headcount, monthly reports and wanted me to do something, a format for them going forward. And I didn't know where to start. So, you know, ISO is all about standardization. I thought it was very interesting to see how you can standardize human beings because, you know, we just, that's the most difficult commodity to standardize really. Yeah. What, what interests me initially was about reporting. But then once I got to discover more about the standard, I was, um, I believed in the mission. I believed in why it's important. And I've just got involved with the various networks since then. And HCM Impact is that one of those networks. I see it in the actual using the set of metrics that are agreed as a consensus group of metrics and start to look at how you operate as a business and how you can now start articulating with evidence-based facts to your management team and, and start looking at the, the heart, the under the engine aspect of your business using these metrics. So for me, the real value lies in the internal whole suite of metrics because looking at that, it shows you the whole dynamics of the system. And But I was very angry when I started learning about the standard that my peers, my bosses hadn't focused me, my attention on metrics and reporting and the value that that can bring. ISO standard, where that adds real value is in having a, a consensus that we can all use the same formulas and the same definitions. We report the information, whether that be internally or externally, in a uniform, universal way. But I don't think the HR professional, in my mind, has used the whole suite of metrics to 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 drive their uh, strategy. This area is an uh, unconscious incompetence um, for mm -hmm. HR professionals. What they don't know, they, 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 they can't value really. So, but at the same time, we really believe in this standard that it's gonna do good for society, you know, bring transparency to organizations, pull back the, the sheets to, to reveal what's actually going on in an organization. But that's something that I see the standard doing for HR people is positioning them as an influencer in their organization. You know, we're talking about human capital committees and the person who's chairing that is your HR, CHRO or HR VP. It's putting a value in human beings and, and human capital so that we start looking at them as a, an income generator rather than a cost center. So what, what does having more transparency in all the human capital data bring? And to summarize, I would say, you know, it's, um, it's, it's the unveiling of previously hidden information. And what, one thing I do is, is HR people love data. And what really frustrates me about this is we love data. This is all about data. Employees are watching HR professionals and finance professionals, and they're expecting us to have this uh, eye on the pulse here. We have all the closed door data, but sometimes we just don't. Every HR person, director level, or should, should know what, what the organization looked like when they arrived. Mm -hmm. And then they should be able to say, look, I did this. This is the data. How do we know um, how you, you were successful in the organization. Well, you've got to have a starting point set, set of data to know where you started and see, show that this has actually had a material impact. I don't think it's actually commonplace. And you said that HR people love data. I don't think the majority do. I think the better ones do. I think the good HR people like data and the not so good to average to below average don't because that's a form of accountability. When you have these internal and external benchmarks of metrics to compare, and there, you know, you can compare industry to industry, apples to apples, oranges to oranges. All of a sudden, like you say, if the return on human capital goes from you know 30, 40 percent to 90 percent under your stewardship as the CHRO in the past year, wow, you know, in, in, in the past 12 months, how much has happened, how much has changed, how much the narrative has changed globally. And I think, you know, in the next six, eight months, we're going to see more of it, you know, the focus on these types of issues. What I like that it's a consensus of 58 mm -hmm. countries globally. It's not just about certification. It's almost like a, a, help, a people health check, you know. You know, these documents are born universal. And they very quickly came back to me and said, well, you know, once people start to use this, it's like a snowball or a cascading effect. 
is that you're going to start to look for comparables. In the future, my children will be looking at a business and saying, you know, I want to live in this area and I could go work over here for this company. They don't pay as well, but look how well they train and look how well they retain their people. I'd like the happy life. So my, as my millennial children or whatever they're going to be called, they're going to say, I'm going to go with that company that's got less money because they treat their people well. If you value your people, your organization will outperform its peers and it's a good value investment. That's, what, that's the future I'd like to see.